modeling of the ideal behavior of amplifiers. We are going to use two boards and we make a functional model. And the function was to transfer for information from the signal source to the load and get an available power gain larger than unity, having a larger power at the output port than at the source available. But for this, we don't need to model the power port. We just can model the amplifier like a controlled source as if it can deliver an infinite power and we are not going to worry where it comes from. So we are omitting the, the power port for the functional model. So then it looks like this. We just have a signal source, a two port and a load. And of course, this is unphysical because there would be a power port somewhere. But all models are wrong and some are useful. And I consider this is very useful because Chris and I use this already for 25 years or longer. And now there's the thing. If you know about network theory, it tells you that if a network has four terminals, you can select the voltage of one terminal and to calculate the voltage of all the other terminals, you need a three by three matrix, which means nine parameters and not a two by two matrix, which is a two port. So where have the other parameters gone? This is about the two port conditions. We simply assume that this, the input port, the current in the input port is flowing out of the opposite terminal again. And the current at the output port in, the, in one port, uh, one terminal of the output port and out of the other terminal of the output port, that's one. And the voltage between input port and output port, also called common mode voltage, does not affect the currents. If that is true, from your three by three matrix, you can eliminate nine, uh, five parameters and you are with what we call a natural two port. And that is then, can, that can under all conditions be modeled with four parameters. And then you can select which one, because we have four variables, the input current, the input voltage, the output current, and the output voltage. So two out of four means we have six combinations of variables. We want two independent and two dependent variables. So there must be six types of two port representations. Indeed, you find them in chapter 18, point six. That's where you find everything about models. But which one is right? Well, the one that is the most convenient, you know, all models are wrong, but some are useful. So you select the most useful one. And what we think is useful for amplifier design is the transmission one or anti-causal representation. You see it here in blue. So we describe the voltage at the input port and the current at the input port as a function of the output and the uh, current and the output voltage. Of course, the thing doesn't work like this. Remember that. You can model it like this because we have six ways of representing this. It's just mathematics. And we think it is convenient to do so, but it doesn't work like this. If you put something on the input, nothing happens uh, at the output, nothing happens at the input because we didn't want to have, we wanted to have unilateral behavior. Remember? So no transfer from output port to input port. We will find later on that that will be the case under certain conditions. It is well, A times D must be B times C, then it, was, it will be a unilateral two port. You can also find that in the book. So this has nothing to do with the physical behavior. And you can measure it like this, theoretically. You can measure A, A says here, it says VI is A times VO plus B times IO. So if I make IO zero, then I simply have VI is A times VO. So I put some voltage at the input, I measure the output voltage, take no current from the output and I know A. So this is what you do. You measure one over the voltage gain, which is A. And no current at the output means you leave the output port open. 
this is theoretically what you do. Let me make some remark later. For B, you would short it. For C, you would leave it open. And for D, you would also short it because you want to have current. This is the way how you measure it. However, this doesn't always go well if you are in a situation that you want to measure it. Let's say in a practical situation, open circuits and short circuits don't exist. Any open circuit radiates or any open circuit has parasitic capacitance. Um, any short circuit practically has dimensions, it has an inductance, or it also radiates, it, it generates a, a field. And that's why in RF equipment, you never find equipment with very, very high input impedance and zero output impedance, for example, for voltages. You have always characteristic impedances and they use scattering parameters for that purpose, S parameters, a completely different type of uh, representation, but it's related to the fact that you cannot have at high frequencies open and short circuits. And in theory, if your amplifier would have as output port an ideal voltage source, you cannot short it because that would lead to an unsolvable network, a determinant equals zero, an infinite current in your short. So if you want to do this, if we would have a test circuit and this test circuit would have an ideal voltage source at the output, you need to do something else. For example, you could connect a load, connect, measure the, the, the relations, and then take the limit of the load impedance would go to zero, and then you can ca calculate A, B, C, or D. Limit R goes to zero or R goes to infinity. So this is the theoretical, the way you should conceptually do it, but in practice you cannot always do it. Remember that well, because that was one problem I found during the instructions. So here you find the measurement setups, and that is basically addressing what I said. In practice you cannot do short or open because they don't exist. Now let's study the source to load transfer of such a configuration. We have a two-port model by ABCD. The direction of the transfer is given by this thing. And we can calculate the transfer from the source to the load voltage. You see, no, I'm not calculating the input voltage here. And the, well, in this case, the output voltage is the same as the load voltage, but not the open circuit output voltage would be different. Maybe different. No, we are, we are talking about information transfer that's why in, in the in the book everywhere in the book you will find source to load transfer that is what we are interested in i'm not interested at all in what happens at the input of the amplifier i'm interested in what source to load is and of course in practice in rf especially we cannot we cannot measure this we cannot measure vs we can measure vi we can put a probe there but we cannot put the probe at VS because that's some internal thing of the source. But here we are dealing with the concept. So the source to load transfer can be written as such. And now we are never going to ask you to derive this formula. Once, uh, let's say one, it is, it is just stupid work. You know, you can just better do it in a computer. I made Slack app for that that gives you symbolic answers to, uh, to these uh, design questions. Um, second, we are not doing an analysis course here. We want to design things. We want to design electronics here. So we need to look at expressions. Of course, we need to analyze them, but we can even use computers for that. And then we need to understand what it means. Let's look at this. This means that if I want, oops, sorry. If I want to have a transfer, from source to load that does not depend on the source impedance and on the load impedance, I must make A, I must give A a finite value and B, C and D zero. That's a design conclusion. And that is what we want in the course. So if I want to make a voltage amplifier, I need to have something in which A, the parameter A of this transmission one matrix is fixed to a, is accurately fixed to a value that we want to have, which is then one over the voltage gain, and B, C, and D are zero. 
And you can look at the other one, for example, the voltage to current transfer. Then we come to the conclusion that A, C, and D must be zero, and B must, be, must have a well-defined non-zero value. Similar, you can do for the trans impedance, the trans impedance here, we need to fix C to an accurate value and keep A, B, and D zero. And here for the current amplifier, we want to fix D. So A, B, C, and D. Four types of amplifiers for four, um, and we need nine. So for the other, we need to do other things. And that is what we come to later. So understand that these formulas are not for analysis, they are for design purposes. And everywhere in the book, everywhere where you find a formula, an expression for something, it is meant to give you design information. Symbolic algebra for us is not the fun of deriving things. I think it's no fun at all, but it's the fun of getting to know things, getting information about what are the design handles, what are the parameters I can change to get the performance that I want. That's what uh, symbolic analysis is for, and not for uh, giving answers like, will it be six or whatever? The answer is always 42.